What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard, it's this. It's dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're a boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. Yeah. Even uh, if the movies that we're reviewing aren't necessarily scary. Yeah. Because today we're looking at The First Purge. Yeah. Which is, uh, you know, it's the one of those. The implications are scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's scary on a societal level. Ethically scary. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, First Purge just came out on 4th of July a week ago today. So, yep, you're getting a fresh, hot review on this movie. <laughs> uh, hey, you know what? We gave you a week to see it so that you could see it and then listen to this without uh, worrying about being spoiled. Exactly. So you're welcome. We are going to spoil the entire thing. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll do a spoiler-free review first yes. for anyone who maybe hasn't seen it but wants to, but wants to hear our thoughts, some vague thoughts, just mm-hmm. hear our thoughts about it. We'll do that. And then we'll get into the nitty gritty, talk about it with all the spoilers in there. Mm -hmm. So that'll be fun. So the first Purge, I just finished covering the Purge series on the kill count, meaning got real deep in there. You watched all those movies with me. And I think we both felt the same way about the series as a whole. Eh, it's fine. (laughs) (laughs) It's, uh, I've never felt more nothing towards a series than the Purge. Yeah. I don't dislike it at all. I don't love it i guess i guess it's a little bit on the positive side for me same Mm -hmm. i yeah i have really weird complicated feelings about the perch movies because i don't think they're that great but they're not bad yeah they're weird they're right in the (laughs) middle but i do think it's nuts that this is a series that uh Blumhouse keeps putting out is a big series for them. Mm-hmm. Big, it's very profitable. Yeah, big money maker. So it's essentially it's it's a tentpole series for them. And I just think it's nuts that this is a franchise that deals with the stuff that it does and has the cast that it does and it makes so much money and is a mainstream thing. I, I think most people know. Everyone knows the purge. Even if they haven't seen it, it's yeah. it's a reference that people understand. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's it's pretty mainstream conversation. Absolutely. This is a, a concept that has uh, completely permeated society and pop culture and you can reference the purge and everyone will know what you're talking about it's yeah like the night of lawlessness where anything goes yeah and i think i think it might just be because of the fact that horror doesn't get the attention uh that other genres necessarily do that there's this series that has so much stuff jam-packed in it in terms of of politics and social commentary and stuff that is very um polarizing you know just because of the climate that we live in now but no i feel like no one talks about them you know in in that way oh they do yeah Uh, with with election year and certainly with this one i'm sure people have been talking about it much more i mean election year was not subtle at all oh no i mean you literally had like a a hillary versus donald kind of surrogates in there yeah and i don't know i've got to give blumhouse some props for having this this series this this big mainstream series that um has mostly people of color for its main casts yeah and you know again it deals with these main characters who they're not wealthy although we have a wealthy dude in this movie we'll talk about him well what dimitri (laughs) yeah but still i know yeah but i'm saying it's it's He's street rich. I wouldn't even say he's wealthy. Wealthy true. is when you have bank accounts and investments. That's true. He doesn't have no stuff. He doesn't have anything <laughs> written on paper. Yeah. Um. Very, yeah, that's true. But yeah, it, it's a look at how the purge. The last. The last few movies. I would say every movie except that first one is a look at how, or even the first one because uh, is it the, the stranger? The stranger. Yeah, yeah, is a look at how something like the purge affects people of lower classes. Yeah, and to watch the evolution of the series has been fascinating because it so so this is a very liberal series. Yes. This is one of the most nakedly liberal horror series. I mean, horror is gener- in general I would I would say tends to be kind of liberal. Yeah, and we're not just saying that. Probably yeah. We happen to I'm be sure liberal, I'm sure people will have their opinions on yeah. that in the comments, but I, yeah, I would say 
Um, you know, it's it's something we've talked about on the podcast before in terms of horror being a genre where the repressed get a, a voice, even if it's metaphorical. And it's kind of this, this space you can play in where we get to um, explore our nightmares. And a lot of those nightmares are what we're dealing with in real life, culturally, socially, politically. So it tends often to focus on people who are, you know, discriminated against. And I don't know. Yeah, that kind of that kind of figure is often represented in horror, even yeah, if it's not surface level obvious. Usually, it's a lot more you know metaphorical. metaphorical. Exactly, the you, Purge series. The Purge is, is just... that's there. It's on the surface. <laughs> you can't argue it. Other it ones, you can have academics sitting around in a circle around coffee arguing about whether or not that's what horror is. But the Purge, that's what this series is. I don't understand people being upset that this one is political all of a sudden. Oh no, they've been upset about the series being political. But I, I've i seen some people being upset that all of a sudden that it got political. Well, and it's like, I, what if what series have you been watching? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, know. election year. I, I don't think it's those called election, election year. year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, the two things stood out to me about Purge, the first Purge, this newest one, this fourth movie of the series, uh, that are different from the preceding entries. The first is that the movie finally decided that it was fine following a group of uh, minority characters, people of color, without a, like, white savior. Without unquote. Frank Grillo. Without Frank Grillo. John Wickin around yeah. all over the place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because in, uh, so the first movie is kind of its own thing. You know, you got a rich, white, wealthy family. Yeah. And then there's the black stranger. That's commentary on its own. But with Anarchy and Election Year, you're following... Uh, more street level disenfranchised people, but they are being led by Frank Grillo. And then in election year, Elizabeth Mitchell is also present. And so even though there's like the uh, people of color who are the main characters, the mainest character is white dude, ass kicker, Frank Grillo, who I fucking love that guy. Yeah. Kicks so much. Ass. And yeah. And we're not saying that we don't like those. Char- oh, no, Frank yeah. Grillo kicks ass. I like seeing Lena Headey show up in the first sure, one. Cause yeah. I like her and everything. But the, the, yeah, the difference that I noticed in the first purge is that they don't have that. The only, uh, recur- like the only main white characters are the NFFA members that we occasionally check in with who are entirely unlikable. Right. Uh, Marissa Tomei, who I didn't even recognize yeah. as Marissa Tomei. It's because my facial blindness thing. And she has blonde hair. When the fuck has she ever had blonde hair? <laughs> Never. So, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> uh, Weekend at Bernie's. Or not Weekend at Bernie's. I'm sorry. My cousin Vinny's Marissa Tomei. Or for all you youths, that's Aunt May. Marissa Tomei. Oh, you're Utes if you're going full My Cousin Vinny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you Utes. <laughs> yes. She's Aunt May. So it occasionally checks in on them, but they're not very likable. And no. it mostly follows uh, black people who, mm-hmm. are, who are in the poorer parts of Staten Island where this experiment is taking place. The other, noti- the other uh, difference that I noticed is kind of a shift in the cynicism or anger of the series I think that you could argue that the first three movies, and uh, this shift kind of happens throughout the series, but the first three movies have this cynicism about the nature of human beings and just like what humans will do. Whereas this movie, as we'll discuss a little bit more when we're talking in the, uh, the spoilery section, it shows that people aren't necessarily inclined to violence naturally and that... Uh, when the purge experiment gets underway, the NFFA people are a little disappointed that there's not more violence going on. Mm-hmm. I don't consider this a spoiler. It's in the trailer. And I, I think that that's this this kind of new sense of optimism in people, in the spirit of like people on the street and the common people. But then there's this reinvigorated cynicism in the government and the people at work behind the mm-hmm. scenes who, uh, as we see in this movie, end up fucking everything up. And that, that's present in Anarchy and Election Year because those semi-trucks and Big Daddy, it's like, oh, those are NFFA members. And in Election Year, like, the, the government is trying to plot this uh, assassination thing against Elizabeth Mitchell, like, tweaking the rules to suit them. But here, it is a full-on reversal of, like, no, people aren't that bad uh, if left to their own devices, mm-hmm. but there are people out there who will, like, rig the game yeah. to make them uh, do all this purge shit. Yeah, you know, especially, I think that's reflected a lot in the main character, who, again, we'll talk about later. Yeah. I just want to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, is there anything oh, else? Uh, I guess overall, if if 
if you like the Purge movies, you'll probably like this one. Yeah, I would say this is exactly as good as Anarchy and Electioneer. Yeah. Maybe. A, uh... I think it's a little bit of a slog. Yeah, but all of them kind of have that aimlessness to them. Yeah. they Because the, the only overarching goal in these movies is survive. Mm-hmm. There's rarely like a specific tangible thing that we root for our characters to do other than just make it through the night. Yeah, and there's not really one specific villain or one specific thing that they're trying to run from. Or I You think- kind of get that, but... Yeah, I think uh, that's actually this movie does uh, is 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 worse with that than the other two because in Anarchy you kind of have Big Daddy driving around in a semi truck. In Election Year you have like the the rival politician and like the that party doing their whole like church night purge thing. Yeah. And this movie like it's not really there. That that uh, like they introduce a, a big bad kind of in the last act. Uh, yeah, the guy who's like leading them around, and it's it's just there's a lot of meandering in this movie. That yeah, doesn't seem to go anywhere. That's yeah, that's kind of how I feel about all of them. Is there's a lot of interesting ideas that feel very kind of loosely connected by a story. Mm-hmm. Like I think they want to explore these kind of philosophical ideas about society and violence and human nature, but yeah. it, then it's like it doesn't have like a story no yeah it's more of just like this over uh overarching view of overarching view i always get those mixed up uh of like i don't know what would happen it's like a thought experiment yeah it's less a movie than a thought experiment so yeah uh if you like the purge movies you'll like this i think <laughs> I, yeah if, if you don't like them you'll hate this just don't if you like the wire you'll like this maybe oh my god if <laughs> <laughs> this, this borrows a lot from The Wire. This movie was written by James DeMonico, who wrote and directed the first three movies. He did not direct this one. This was the first time he he let someone else direct okay. it. Uh, so that's the only difference here. But It did feel different. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was directed by Gerard McMurray, who doesn't have a Wikipedia article. So that's interesting. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a purge. It's a purge what do you movie. Want? <laughs> uh, do you think it's time to get into the spoiler? I spoilery? think so. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, if you if you w- still want to see this and you haven't yet and you don't want to get spoiled, get the fuck out of here. Go. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. Spoiler. Now we're spoiling it. Okay. First of all, if we're if we're doing a purge, oh, a God. first purge podcast, we have to properly decorate this set. Oh God. I made this like in a, thirty seconds. She's very excited about this. <laughs> Tell them what I'm doing. Uh, she is hanging up a Halloween quote unquote poster because in this movie, there's a poster for Blumhouse's Halloween re- uh, reboot sequel, it. whatever. It's, pro- it's probably so bright. It's probably just bright. It's white. just like a white thing. But here's, 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 uh, <laughs> here's her Michael. Here's Michael. And it yep. says Halloween on it. Yeah. That's the poster. Which. You know what? Actually, hey, before we get into the like the spoilery stuff, let me address the timeline issue because it's a thing of uh, a lot of dispute going on, okay? And I just want to lay out my facts here. Go for it. Because people keep commenting and they keep saying I'm wrong about shit, but from what I understand, here is what's up, okay? That first movie, The Purge, takes place in 2022. No, I'm sorry. Tw- uh, Fuck. <laughs> Damn it, I think it's 2022, okay? 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 1, 2, 3. Yes, it takes place in 2022 and specifically says it is the sixth purge, okay? okay. So, assuming it's an annual thing, and, uh, okay, assuming it's an annual thing, that means that the first purge would have been 2017, because then you have 18, 19, 2020, 2021 and 2022 this is the same kind of counting that throws people off on the kill count but it's it it makes sense count on your fingers if the first purge is the 2017 and then the sixth purge is 2022 okay so that first movie establishes six purge 2022 it's supported by the the footage you were watching in the opening credits there with of like purge footage it's actually real life 
security cam footage of like riots and shit, which I didn't know. So you might actually be watching real people die there, which is crazy. But the first year that it shows any footage from is 2017. So according to that first movie, first purge happens 2017. Okay. So immediately we're on an alternate planet. Yes. And you can assume that the NFFA won the 2016 election. Okay, weird. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, Anarchy says that it's the seventh purge. It says that in the movie. And so, that takes place the year after the first movie in 2023. Got it? Cool. Great. Election year is what throws everyone off. Because there's an opening scene, and I'm so sorry if this is boring, because you're sitting there like, I watched these movies once, I don't care. But I just want to address yeah, this. Yeah, I, I truly don't care. Yeah, but you, you can check I know, out I know, I'm just, yeah, I'm nodding politely. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so election year opens with a cold open of Elizabeth Mitchell's family getting, getting purged, okay? It's during a purge. And then it says 18 years later, and she's running for office, okay? That... They mention in the same like scene or the same news broadcast that the founding fathers came, the new founding fathers came into power 25 years ago. So they come into power 2016. 25 years later is 2041. And then you subtract the 18 from that for the cold open. And so the cold open took place during 2023. And some people are like, Yo, no, it took uh, the cold open took place 18 years before the rest of the movie, which took place two years after Anarchy, because it came out two years after Anarchy. But if you do that math... That's not possible. It's not possible, because 18 years prior to two years after Anarchy, follow me here, there weren't any purges. Okay? So I just want to defend my timeline here and say that they intentionally kind of leave it ambiguous, because in election year, when Frank Grillo, who looks great for being 18 years later says uh some years ago i almost did something during a purge they don't even put a number on it and in the first purge i was listening for a year never heard it but we must assume that the first purge takes place last year in 2017 rant over i'm so sorry if that was boring as fuck that was an awful minute and a half of (laughs) a podcast I'm sure some people will like it, but holy shit, that was nerdy. I'm so sorry, but I get so frustrated <laughs> when people tell me I'm wrong, and I'm like, no, I, know, I did I get my it. research. Someone on the internet's wrong. God, tell them. God, tell them, man. You got to win those internet battles. Yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> All right, but about the first purge. Yeah, so wow, that's throwing me off now that that is supposed to have been in 2017, this- because the movie starts with a lot of... of well, I guess it, it makes some sense because they start with news footage and stuff and you see, you know, real footage from protests. and Was that real footage? I assume. Yeah. I mean, there, there's faces blocked out. Yeah. They had faces blurred out. Um, I mean, they're they looked like, you know, why stage news footage when stuff already exists from Black Lives Matter marches and sure. things of that nature. Mm hmm. Well, actually, you know what? I don't know if that's the first thing we see. I think the first thing we see is Skeletor being crazy. Oh, yeah. We get a little cold open. Yeah, I think so. Because it's like, what do you what do you do when you're upset? And he's like, I pipe up. Yeah. This guy is crazy. Skeletor. Um, Yeah, there is a character named Skeletor. Yep. Which originally, because like another character calls him that. And I thought it was just a, a mean nickname. <laughs> <laughs> and so I wrote it down as a joke, like, haha, I'm going to call this guy Skeletor the whole podcast because it'll be really funny. But then, no, that's just actually his name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This guy, he's a key and peel character. Yes. He's looking to fucking. He wants to fight some Terry. That's right. He's looking to Drax them clowns. Yes, he is. <laughs> he's got crazy, got- like, <gasps> uh, like, scar tattoos pretty much all over his face. If and a purge was to happen on this block, psh. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he's, my lungs are so small. I just want to hit that pipe more. <laughs> this guy's fucking insane. He's having a really good time. Yeah, possibly actor. too good of a time. But you know what? It's the purge. Whatever. The guy next to me was definitely like, what the? F-? He audibly said, what the fuck? After this first scene with uh-huh. Skeletor. Uh, but Skeletor is being interviewed by, like, NFFA people who are like, what do you do when you're angry? Mm-hmm. And, and he says, I, want, I just want to purge. I want to say something along those yeah. lines. They're and like, the NFFA guy's like, interesting choice of words, yes, purge. Mm, yes, you shall get to purge soon. Yep. Cut to title. First 
purge. The first purge. Yeah, apparently there's a mortgage crisis worse than 2008. Worse than 2008, that's which, bad. again, that's what made me think that this is in the future. Yeah. Because, Maybe yeah. their bubble burst. Alternate planet. So, yeah, it's an alternate Just think alternate, alternate Earth. That solves all those problems. All, yeah. 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 Because uh, uh, apparently the winner of the 2016 elections was the NFFA, this new party that arose. Yes. Like, this is all stuff that we could have assumed from the previous movies. I like movies, seeing but it, it, though. I like I seeing want it. More, like, I, I think that's kind of why. I don't know if I'll watch the TV series. Well, I mean, I, I, I want to give it a chance, yeah. but it's kind of what I want from it is I want to know more about that, that political party. Yeah. Because I find it really interesting. Because during the credits of this movie, there's a fucking ad for uh, the, yeah. the Purge miniseries, I the guess. The end, said. not the beginning of the, not the beginning credits. Oh, yeah, That'd yeah, be crazy. end credits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before you watch this movie. Yeah. yeah, there's an ad for like a 10 episode miniseries uh, coming to TV soon. The Purge, I, I think, think. USA. I think so. Oh, really? That sucks. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Why would it not be like a Netflix thing? I hope that Chucky series is on Netflix so it could get fucking gory. Yeah. But uh, USA, I mean, I guess it's on brand, but uh, it's it's going to be a TV series. And I remember James DeMonico saying that he wants to explore life in this world outside of just Purge Night. Because all these movies take place on Purge Night or yeah, like the day which before. which to me sounds great. Yeah, because like Purge takes place in, I think... Uh, it takes place in the spring, I think March maybe. And so like what what's going on in May? You know, when you got 10 months till the next purge, what's going on? Yeah, what's life like on this weird alternate mm-hmm. earth? Cuz apparently like crime is all low because of it and employment's super high. It's I doubt it. I think those numbers are fudged. Right, as we see the NFFA. Yeah, I think that's what we'll find out in the TV series. I don't think crime is any ding dong different. <laughs> Then before the purge, <laughs> the government's fudging those numbers. Oh my Let god! Let me put on my tinfoil hat. Yeah, do it. But no, I think that's what we're gonna find out on the show. Sure, that makes sense after this movie. Mm-hmm. The NFFA, this third party that arose as an alternate to Republicans and Democrats, mm-hmm. uh, endorsed by the NRA. They yeah, were, just name dropping that. Just, Has the yeah. NRA been name dropped in the purge? I, think I thought you see, they were. Like their stuff. In election year, maybe. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I don't think it's a coincidence that NFFA sounds and looks kind of like NRA. Yeah. You know, you get that association. Yeah, although uh, I think this is the first movie we see the NFFA's apparent logo, which well, is like. I know. I leaned over and was like, James, have we seen that before? Because that's like, it's like an, an iron that's an cross, iron cross, yeah. which is a symbol uh, that's commonly used by neo Nazis and white yes, supremacists yes. nowadays. Yeah, dude, there were people in the election year kill count because I call them Nazis the whole time. They're like, they're not Nazis. They're white supremacists. Oh. Well, one, well, some of them have fucking swastikas on their fucking armor. Yeah. So, yeah, those are Nazis. Those are Nazis. And two, come on. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just fuck off. Sorry, I didn't get my alt right hate groups fucking right. Yeah, have some respect, James. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, spoilers, a ton of Nazis and KKK members Nazis, get, get KKK. killed in this movie. They do a lot they get of killing, shot. Though, too. So if you want it, that sounds good, which it should. You can just lean back, crack open a cold one, and enjoy The Purge. It's a good summer movie. <laughs> yep. Bring the family. <laughs> <laughs> President Bracken is elected. Yes. And he looks a little bit like Ray Liotta, I think. <laughs> All right. Like scary old Ray Liotta. You made a uh, funnier comparison yesterday. Oh, worse Ted Cruz? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, wait. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I was getting confused as to who was the president and then who... Because I think the guy in like Purge headquarters all night is chief of staff. He's his chief of staff. Although he, I, I feel like he, they uh, purposely chose someone who looks kind of Spicer esque, Sean Spicery, and then oh. in the end he's like giving a press conference that really solidified it for me. I was like, is this guy supposed to be Sean Spicer? Uh, yeah, he's kind of like bumbling well, a little bit, fucking weenie. He's he's a bit of a weenie. But yeah, that the actor does a great job with him. To be fair, he's so sure. so unlikable. He's very <laughs> unlikable, <laughs> and he wins in the end. Spoiler! Mm. It's the spoiler section. 
So, yeah, this President Bracken wins, and they're talking about this experiment. They just jump straight to this experiment, the purge. Mm -hmm. And so the whole thing is like, yeah, we're going to do this experiment set up by Marissa Tomei. She's like a psychologist. Who Her character is weird. I don't. Are we supposed to have sympathy for I her? Was wonder, I was wondering, that's in my notes. Are we supposed to feel bad for her? Because I don't. Spoiler, she ends up like, like the yeah. whole time we're checking in with them. She's like, okay, well, let's, let's, okay, we'll explain, let's explain what her, what her deal is. So mm -hmm. she is a behavioral scientist, yep. publicly not affiliated with any party. Um, I have a feeling she's at least ideologically she voted aligned, for the but yeah, she, exactly. Yeah. But she, she develops the idea of the purge and, and according to her, um, calculations, research, her research, <laughs> quote unquote, the, the purge will lower crime rates, blah, blah, blah. You know the deal. But, yeah. um, so we we kind of keep checking in with her all night, and she what? Okay, so the purge. There's not as many murders as the government wants. They want it to be a big blowout, kind of. Yeah, to prove this, that. Uh, let me let me get Spicer Weenie's name. Sure. So I don't have to keep referring to him as that, and probably offending someone. But, oh, what uh, if we call him Sean Spicer? Yeah. I mean, look at it. You, you know what? I didn't write this movie. Uh, Aldo Sabian. Cool. Aldo, like, I guess we'll, we'll call, call him Aldo. Aldo, I think, Aldo. yeah, yeah. So he he's freaking out because there's not as many murders and everyone's just partying. Like they they show yeah. the camera, the little like cameras Looks they have, dope. and everyone's just having block parties and stuff. Yeah. So he basically organize, and we'll we'll get more into detail as we go through the plot. But he, he basically organizes um, violence to to happen throughout the night. Like he he and he makes murder happen yeah, to fulfill the, the expectations night... that the government has and so the government can be like look we were right so that their party doesn't look stupid yeah and so marissa tomei realizes that he's doing this and basically fudging the results of this of of the purge of the yeah. experiment and then she gets all well it wasn't supposed to happen like this like you can't just go. and she she's she, like what have i done what have i done oh no and are we supposed to feel bad for her because yeah, because earlier when she was watching the footage of the first murder in the purge she seemed fine with it and i'm like that's still super fucked up yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Ugh. I'm not sure how we're supposed to feel I don't know. about that character. She gets killed and I was fine with it. Yeah. Even though her getting Very killed. Very unceremoniously. Was, yeah. Too. Even though her getting killed meant Aldo was winning. Yeah. I mean, he wins in the end. I was going to say that's, that's another thing with the movie is I think you were talking about how it feels a little more optimistic and the ending i could see how if there are no other purge movies feels optimistic where they they say like well now we fight and then that's when you leaned over and whispered at the polls which <laughs> yeah is that you know they're yeah they're gonna fight the good fight but you know there's all these other purge movies and yeah, it's like and, and as you see from those other ones the rest of the country buys into it and mm -hmm. just goes along with it without much government prompting yeah. apparently so that sucks yeah that sucks i i really like and this is the thing is is there's so many things about this movie that I genuinely do really like um so it's yeah perch movies are weird man because <laughs> I I'm never like pumped about them I'm always super eh, whatever but there's there's stuff in them I really like and I like the uh the setup of of the experiment and how they 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 did the first purge. It was in an isolated area. It was on it's on Staten Island. Yeah, and I don't I don't know New York. Excuse I my don't ignorance. Is either. Is Staten Island lower income like this? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think so. I, like, I really, I, I also, the only I, thing I know never... about like the boroughs is like Brooklyn used to be lower income. Yeah. And then it got, uh, hipsterfied, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's all I know. Manhattan is business. I mean, a lot of the boroughs are pretty, yeah, gentrified now. Yeah. But apparently Staten Island uh if if this is true i'm sorry new yorkers i'm I know, so we sorry really that we're ignorant don't know. we're over here on the west coast dude yeah. we're staying up way later than you and partying and surfing yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah so it's going to take place on staten island mm -hmm. where uh they say like the demographics will be good aka uh black and brown black, i was gonna say aka <laughs> black people live there yeah. poor black people i i i think the setup of it as a paid experiment was really smart yeah so and that's the thing is is the government's uh this is a government sanctified experiment. And I thought this was so such a good way to set up because I think watching the purge movies often you think 
how like how could this happen? Yeah. How could we ever get to a point where this happens? Also, so many comments on my videos are like, why don't they just leave the country? Yeah, like, that's super easy. Yeah, right? Like Canada they, doesn't want us. <laughs> Neither does Mexico. No one wants us to, you know. And if you're like in the middle of the country and yeah, you drive so over the boarding fucked. and you're and you're poor. Yeah, I I was like, how many of you can at the drop of a hat just, just move, move, leave the country? Most people can't afford to do that. Yeah, most people don't have savings for fucking if their car breaks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can't. Oh, man, but right. but this movie helps explain it because the government actually is paying people to stay on the island during the experiment. They're giving everyone who wants to stay five thousand dollars to stay, and then also upping the ante and sweetening the pot a little bit by saying if you participate in the purge you will make more money Mm -hmm. meaning if you go out and purge your anger through whatever crime and some people are like what like murder and they're like i don't know know. we're not telling i don't know but they'll make more money and to track that they give them these contact love, lens cameras. I love how... Well, they... So everyone who stays in, on Staten Island has an... It's an implanted tracking device. They get, yeah, tracking device. But also... Or I guess only the people who get who are staying and getting paid. Yeah. I think conceivably people like Dimitri are staying but not but they're getting not, paid. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, and uh, uh, Naya, I don't think, would no, go no, and... No. Yeah, <laughs> she knows She knows what's up. You don't get stuff implanted in you. you don't, get, don't Don't do it. If anyone... You, has Belko experiment taught you nothing? Never get something implanted. But here's the thing, though. <laughs> that The implanted thing, I'd be like, no, that's fucked up. But then they're like, well, what about these super cool contact lenses? <laughs> then you might have me. Yeah. Because they're pretty cool looking. Yeah, so they give the contact <laughs> lenses to people... Uh, to, who who are going to participate in the purge and who want to make more money by purging. Yes. And these contact lenses are cameras mm-hmm. to uh, track and record everything that they're doing, but they also are these fucking, like, they light fucking up light crazy up. things. Um, There's no reason for them to light up, and there's no reason for them to all be different colors. Fuck yeah. But I... Except for being awesome. Thought it looked really cool. They look real cool. Yeah. Like... <laughs> And halfway through the movie, the impracticality of this is kind of acknowledged by Isaiah, who is uh, Naya's younger brother. We'll get into the characters in a minute. Yeah. But he's running around and he's running away from people. And he's like hiding in dark places. And someone looks into a window and he has to close his eyes because he's like, oh, fuck, my contacts are going. Uh-huh. And he winds up taking them out because, yeah, they're going to make you kind of obvious. But it makes for some pretty cool imagery. It does, yeah. Like and some creepy, creepy things. Too. Like it's it's a creepy effect. Like when he's walking down the alley yes. and there are people and looking people out at him from the window. In the window, and they're just a silhouette. It reminded me of 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 Pennywise when you see him yeah. in the butchery when Mike sees him. Yeah, and, and he's just, just his eyes, eyes glowing. and he's kind of waving. And so that was cool imagery. It looks really neat, and yeah. I would love a pair of light up contacts. Yeah, it's it's very awesome. Yeah, uh, again, visually. just you know something that I think is just it looks cool. Therefore, we're doing it because it looks cool. I don't think <laughs> I would ever really like. Why are they like the different colors? Like that's more expensive to get them made in different colors. <laughs> Another thing that they establish is that the people of Staten Island voted for this. That they were given yeah. the option and voted for it. But Van Jones, Van Jones shows up. Actual. My first CNN note. My con- very first note is just Van Jones. <laughs> yeah, actual CNN. CNN. Contributor? Yeah. Uh, Van Jones is in this movie and he's interviewing M- Marissa Tomei uh-huh. and uh, Aldo, and they're <laughs> like. What? Nothing. It's just him playing himself. Yeah, he's and literally Van it's Jones. It's like Van Jones' actual talking points if he lived on alternate <laughs> Earth. Yeah, and uh, they're like, well, Staten Island voted for him, but Van Jones is like... Bullshit. Well, no, he they they were co- coerced because part of the vote included that financial incentive. Right. So it was the people voting yes, uh, as Van Jones hypothesizes, and I buy in, were doing so because they were like, oh, this is an easy way to make money. If we, yeah, if we all do this, we all get $5,000 to stay at home, as one yeah. character puts it. She's like, I get 5000 bucks to just stay at home. Yeah. So that's okay. like the incentive. And like, again... I kind of like how this movie is setting that up. It, it's giving justification yeah. for how this would get started, it's, how people could agree to it's it It's also, first. Um, I would say there's a ton of historical basis for this kind of experiment and this kind of use of, of 
a certain demographics of people in our country specific i thought of the tuskegee experiments yeah um which, that, which if you didn't know is super fucked up yeah. uh it, it was experiments i want to say in the tennessee oh. yeah well i'm trying to think of one early 1900s tennessee it might also be Shit. wrong i'm, I'm not exactly sure when it was but it, it was it was an experiment conducted at tuskegee university um with i think the gov- it was a government experiment yeah. where they they paid these really poor black farmers, basically. Um, I think they they had 600, 400 ish already had syphilis, but a hundred and some didn't, and they they inf- unknowingly infected the hundred and some with syphilis. So it was a study about syphilis. None of the participants knew. Yeah. Um, and this went on for years, and the the it was a paid thing. But the thing is, is the after effects of that experiment, um, they they told them after a while, like, we're actually not going to treat you. Sorry. It just fucked up yeah, these it's, men's it's lives. It's super dark uh, It's Yeah. I can't history. even fully yeah, get into because it, it's it's super. Um, I think it deserves more of a complex analysis yeah, than what I can do right now. But cuff, like. yeah, my my like recollection of it. But um yeah, I, I totally get, you know, the the men who in that experiment, sure, they they did it voluntarily, just kind of like we see people in this movie. Yeah. So Vol- you know, I, I totally buy that people would voluntarily let the purge happen and stay and be paid for because they're like, sure. Whatever, it's easy money. I'll do it. I'm poor. They need the money. I, some of them say five thousand dollars will change my life. And yeah. like, yeah, no shit. That yeah, will that's a lot of money. Low income families who like can't yeah. even afford rent and shit. So I think I think the idea of it being a, a paid experiment was very intentional. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's meant to evoke stuff like Tuskegee. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So this this is kind of trying to to just shore up the because I, I know some complaints about the series is how could this ever happen? I think this movie does a decent job. I think so too. How it could I think that was something I really and, liked about it. And then at the end of it, if the government's telling the populace that this worked, then more people might buy into it. I still have maybe a hard time believing that the uh, we can we had a debate later. about yeah. this. Yeah, well, we can yeah, talk about it later, but. So we we introduce our characters, our main characters that we're going to be following. There's Naya, who is uh, uh, played by that chick who played Tony Braxton in a Lifetime movie. Is uh-huh. that right? Uh, you'll, uh, Lex Scott Davis. Mm-hmm. And uh, she is a anti-purge activist. Yeah, she's a boots on the ground activist. We actually have the same boots. They should have oh, really? close up with them. I was like, nice. Nice. Because... <laughs> I every protest I've gone to in the last year <laughs> worn those boots. Yeah, so she's <laughs> she's like, do not participate, do not purge. That's her chant. Her little brother Isaiah mm-hmm. is. Uh, I mean, we'll get into him a little bit more, but so she has a little brother Isaiah, and then her ex boyfriend Dimitri is this like drug kingpin who runs a operation that James DeMonico learned uh, from The Wire. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> <Yeah>. he. <laughs> <laughs> that's why i don't think it's it's wrong at all to just make comparisons to the wire oh no this movie is written by a guy who everything he knows about drugs and <laughs> drug running is from the wire which you know what if i wrote a movie like yep. this that it would be the wire because that's all i fucking know about that yeah. too. but basically our, our d dimitri is a stringer bell if you've seen the wire he's stringer bell but he's, he's a lot nicer. He is a lot nicer. He's buffer, I would he's, say. He, yeah. He's fucking He's a very jacked. handsome man. The first shot of him is him running on that treadmill. Oh, my like, God. Holy I know. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That guy's arms are, like, bigger than my body. They're, like, big hams. They're just <laughs> yeah. huge. It's insane. But he's, uh, so, yeah, he's, like, a drug dealer, like, a drug kind of kingpin on Staten Island. And he's against the purge because... He says that he doesn't like it because he doesn't know what it is. Yes, can't it's trust chaos. It. Yeah, yeah. He likes to have control over things. He's, he's he's a he's a little finger. He sure. he no, wants to cause. No, he's the opposite. Oh, of that's finger. true. Yeah. He doesn't want chaos. He's the complete opposite. Of he's like, finger. no, no, I can't take advantage of chaos. It's too unpredictable. Yeah, uh, that's, that's Yol- true. Yolan Noel is his name. Uh, oh wow, he's only a year older than me. That's interesting. Well, you know that that makes sense. I'm yeah, an old we're man getting now. old now. Yep, and uh, he was an insecure. I don't know what that is. But oh, he... I've heard that's really good. That's oh, really? a sh- yeah, it's okay. a show. It's supposed to be very good. He's he was great in this. I really liked. I him. liked him a lot too. He was a fun character to root for. Yeah, because he like could kick ass, and uh-huh. he was like this. You know, he's this drug dealer, but like a moral one. As... That's what I meant earlier when I think you were talking about like just the the 
nuance that this movie has. It has a little more empathy towards like most people aren't bad. Yeah. And but like situations make them, Mm -hmm. you know, so that I think that's what I meant when I said that's kind of exemplified in this character is um, like if, if you're just reading a description of this dude, you don't know anything about him. He's you would say he's a bad guy. He's a drug kingpin, you know. Well, to be fair, they get away with it by never exploring the consequences of his actions. And also, you know? like, what, what did he do to, like, get to be yeah, the... Yeah. But still... Unlike, it, unlike The Wire, sure. they never show the drug addicts <laughs> whose lives are ruined the because very, of well, his... Well, Naya does say, like, you. that's why she's like, don't fucking talk to me because you've ruined this neighborhood. True. Yeah, so Naya is, uh, used to be with him romantically yes. and left him because she didn't want to, you know, be with a drug dealer. Right. Uh, so yeah, it, I like that he's a little morally gray, but he's a good guy and yeah. we root for him. And I think it's a nice way to kind of show in a character that, you know, when you're kind of born into a shitty ass situation, it's it's complicated. Well, that debate is there a little bit. It like, is, it's, it's, yeah. You know. <laughs> it's the it's the wire. It's the wire. Yeah, because like <laughs> Naya constantly like they ha- they have conversations. She's Isaiah like, I, I, too. I, like how can how Isaiah basically arguing like, well, how can I not? want to be someone like d because how else are we supposed to get out of here there's no other answer yeah and she argues to d i grew up here too but i didn't choose that path so yeah you know those conversations are there obviously it's not going to get as deep as a no and again that's why it's purge is so weird because i like those <laughs> ideas and i like those characters talking about that stuff but it's not enough for me to you know but that's it, that's not what this movie is. Yeah, it's weird. This movie wants to have a lot of things. That it, it always does. Yeah, I will say that. J- so James DeMonaco is a a, a white man who uh, obviously in these movies is writing for a lot of uh, characters of color, and I feel like he did a much better job in this movie. Yeah. Than in Election Year when you have the character Joe Dixon talking about like. Oh man, there are some choice lines in that movie that I left out of the kill count, but he's he's oh. he literally like they're in a van and he's like, uh, we got a, a gr- like I'm just gonna quote this. It, oh it, no, it, he's like, there's a there's a group of Negroes coming at us and we're That's sitting here right. like a bucket of chicken. They and- drop the not n word. Yeah, a the nine times. word because they say Negroes, they say Negroes a lot. and it's like uh, they don't do that in this. No, one. this movie they drop the N word here. Yeah, they say that a lot, which I feel is I don't know is more realistic. I I'm just guessing. Yeah, I have no hi, idea. We're white, but yeah, hi, we don't hi. know. But uh, it, we sat it, here for ten minutes trying to adjust the light because my face was so blown <laughs> out because I'm so fucking pale. <laughs> <laughs> that's true we're white as fuck but, uh, um. but it, it felt less forced there were some moments uh-huh. but I'm specifically comparing the character of Dolores here to Joe Dixon from election oh, year oh we love Dolores Dolores is fucking great she does have a few lines like her first li- one of her first lines is like uh, sweating like a like a snitch sweating which is like, like snitch, that, yeah. that feels a little forced to me but all of her other lines are just fucking hilarious yeah. lines yeah She's talking about, uh, was it gut bubble? Oh, I've got bubble guts. She, bubble guts, and she like shit, shit, shit her, She shits herself. It's great. It, it's fair. No, it, it tastes like old man ass. Don't ask me Don't how ask I know. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah, like, she was we awesome. love Dolores. Also, uh, fun fact, the actress credited as playing Dolores doesn't have a Wikipedia article, but is just credited as Mugga. Fuck yeah. One word. Dude, Mugga. she's seen some shit, probably. <laughs> she's probably seen some shit with yeah. a name like Mugga. Got, yeah, <laughs> come on, dude. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think it's one where, because I, I was curious as to how, um, the Purge series is viewed in like, uh, film criticism circles that aren't like white critics. Like, I was looking for critics who are people of color, specifically mm-hmm. black people. Like, how, like, how do they feel about the Purge? Because it's a white guy trying to write black characters yeah. and. I think like pretty positive. I, I saw mixed opinions and, but I saw, uh, I think I saw a Reddit thread talking about purge anarchy, I think, but it, it's weird. Yeah. Those, those movies, I think he, I think the director and writer genuinely has gone out of his way to like, listen to the criticisms people have had yeah. about these movies. And I think it, I think this one shows like some growth. I think he has really good intentions. He has good intentions yeah, for sure. I think election year, that character of Joe Dixon was like, pretty pretty cringe i i read a comment on reddit uh i think from a black man who said he was he saw the movie in a theater with a predominantly black audience and i i remember his comment was something along the lines of 
at first we were laughing along with Joe Dixon's mm. lines, and then as they kept going and going throughout the movie, uh, the reaction was more like groans at it because like yeah, the, yeah, it just is nonstop with that character. It's pretty bad, but uh, again, I think James DeMonico has good intentions. I I think so too. He's trying, and yeah. and as we saw with this movie, I think he adjusted and listened to the criticism, like you said. So yeah, well, the, it's yeah, I think I think the dynamic of of white people writing for and directing people of color is like a really important thing to explore too you know Mm -hmm. like being able to write those characters as people yeah and And i'm also curious if this movie uh if this series it does well like box office wise demographically with like black people since they're i would love i would really like to look at the demographics because like why else i i assume it has to because why else would they continue in that direction with those characters more be- being more represented in mm-hmm. these movies uh my guess is that they looked at who was watching these movies mm-hmm. and were like oh it's this demographic let's go further in that yeah, direction which is a re- like I, I i had a little twitter thread about this the other <laughs> yeah. week but it's why this series is so interesting mm-hmm. and yeah. like for anyone who's like rolling their eyes at this discussion just like it's it's something to talk about and it's interesting because just think about how uh, the reason we're talking about it is because it's it's relatively rare as, for yeah. a horror series to to focus on like black characters like in this. In movies in general. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of always been this like niche thing like you got the Tyler Perry movies or movies that are like aimed. Yeah, like these are movies for black people. Exactly. But The Purge, everyone knows The Purge. I wouldn't I I don't think if you if you ask someone who hadn't seen them to like describe them, I don't think you would ever get someone being like, "Oh, those are like quote unquote black horror movies." Yeah, you which is why that. I think they're super interesting that that's, they're that's a mainstream. What makes them interesting. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's Wh- just why like aren't comment. they better? <laughs> because most movies aren't better. Yeah. Most movies are a solid. This man. is why it's like it's. I I have such a weird relationship with the Purge <laughs> series. It's like it's very um, it's difficult. Yeah, it's trying. I I want them to keep trying. But also, trying. it is kind of cool that, it, you know, because I think often the pressure is a bit higher. And granted, this is, is written and directed by a white guy, so maybe the pressure is a little bit less. But often when you have movies either made by or starring um, women or people of color, like minorities, there's more pressure for it to be amazing. There's more pressure for those movies to be masterpieces. You know, I think there's a bit more because... It, the second the the opportunity for a second chance is less sure um so i think it is kind of cool that these movies are pretty mediocre but they just still keep coming yeah, out keep, thanks blumhouse you know i really like blumhouse. everyone you know everyone deserves a chance to be mediocre yeah and, you know Co- you know if that's colin what america's trevorrow, about <laughs> if colin trevorrow can have that many chances yeah at it, then so should everyone else <laughs> <laughs> we're not even anywhere into the plot I know. of this movie Sorry. uh isaiah <laughs> who is Naya's younger brother. Turns out he's running drugs, uh, possibly for Dimitri. I don't know if it was ever established. I I think so. He just doesn't know because he's so high up. But uh, while he's doing, you know, young runner on the corner, wire style, Skeletor walks up. Skeletor. And (laughs) fucking gets all up in his face and winds up like cutting him in the neck. Yeah. On the side of the neck with a razor. Which he had in his mouth. Yeah, I think he had in his mouth. He took it off his tongue. Yeah. Crazy ass Skeletor. Skeletor. So, uh, yeah, that's how Naya finds out mm-hmm. that Isaiah was involved with drugs. And she's very upset because, mm-hmm. you know, there's that whole thing. Like, you got to be better than that. And uh, I, I found this interesting is that when she goes to D and complains to him about Isaiah having worked for him. And, again, he said he didn't know. But she mentions that, you know, he got cut. And D is like, we'll take care of it. And we'll take care of him, Skeletor. And she gets upset because she's like, "What? You're gonna you're gonna beat him up? You're gonna kill him? That's the way you do things." And I actually found it interesting later that uh, that's what Aldo does. He takes care of Marissa Tomei uh-huh. and has her killed. So it shows that like, oh, there is the there's not much difference between the drug yeah. kingpin and the government that's official. Right. Yeah, have that commentary. Purge. Yeah, <laughs> I might end up liking this movie more. I know. <laughs> I, you know I can't. that happens, dude. Sometimes you think about a movie and talk about it, and you end up liking it more or less than I you think. Thought, I so. just, I just have respect for how much it is trying to like just go for it. It's going for it, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, Isaiah ends up signing up for the purge after he gets in trouble with his sister, 
And part of the little box that they give him, the little starter kit, the purge starter yeah. kit uh, that has the contacts, also includes the blue flowers, which has been... I did not write the name of those. I forgot it, but they're the flowers. They're introduced immediately in the first movie uh, on the Are radio. They? Yeah, on the radio, they're like, remember to show your support for the purge by That's putting out the right. blue flowers. Yeah, and he... And uh, what's his name? Ethan Hawke get, brings home these blue flowers for Lena and gives them to her. That's and funny. it's a little bit in anarchy. I forget if it's at all in election years because I feel like this series kind of picks up things and tries to run with them but forgets about them sometimes because in Anarchy there was this thing where all the characters would be like stay safe to each other as if it was like a pre-purge thing to say uh-huh. to each other and they say it in this movie but I don't think they say it in the first movie or election year so it's like weird. Okay. it tosses a lot of balls up and forgets to catch some of them sometimes Yeah, but like we said it's trying to do a lot Yeah. so Isaiah signs up with the, the purge and then uh, the purge starts yeah naya is in a church um uh, like a local church with like a stay safe church stays yeah for um, people who couldn't get off the island because a lot of people leave right but after a certain point they're like that's the last that's bus it. out that's the last ferry and then out. They, i think i think she talks to some of her friends who say like yeah i i, I am getting the five thousand dollars yeah i stay. signed up for it but i'm just gonna chill in this church get yeah. my five thousand bucks my life will be changed right yeah. and honestly like you know that'd be pretend, yeah pretending <laughs> pretending i don't know anything about the purge like if i live in this world this experiment's happening i i i think i would just feel i would be naive enough to think like no <laughs> one's no one's actually gonna like go you know yeah like we're all just gonna keep going on like it's the same because this is silly yeah i'm gonna stay and keep five thousand like get five thousand dollars i would do it sure so they all they all um take shelter in this church um and i think importantly uh, like a black church it's an all black church oh yeah i think that's important back. for later and mm. i think as soon as they showed who was in the church and just like the setting of it i just i had such a bad feeling man yeah and i i was right ultimately just some symbolism that i was like they're gonna go for it man that's yeah. gonna suck Isaiah tells Naya that he left, that he got on the last bus out, and that he's going to Brooklyn with, like, a relative. Yeah. That's a lie. He's lying. He's going out to purge because he wants to go find Skeletor. He wants to get He get wants revenge. to kill him legally. <laughs> yeah. He wants to get that. He wants to purge it up. Also, <laughs> in the interviews with people signing up for the purge are these two ladies who <gasps> are like, people make fun of us. And so we want to sign up for the purge. And they're like, do you ever think of killing people? And they're like, what do you think? And then so the purge starts. It's got the it's got the disclaimer and it's got the sirens. Those sirens are cool. Those yeah, sirens they're are scary. nice and like scary and they're a good association. They're like, oh, those are the purge sirens. The, yeah, I like that they have the purge sirens and also they use just the, the real emergency alert system sounds, which terrify me. Mm-hmm. Those sounds are... And and the voice reading the announcement, I believe, is at this point the only uh, actor to be in all four of the movies now. Oh, hey. Uh, The the woman reading those things is the same woman. So Uh good for her. Uh, So the purge starts. And yeah, these ladies. I believe I could be wrong because we were we stayed through the credits. There are two characters named Anna and Elsa. I no think way. I think they're I I <laughs> have a feeling that these are two sisters. Oh, I'm Anna sorry. And Elsa. It's uh, Anna and Elsa. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm from Michigan. I don't give a for fuck. Our Michigan accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So these ladies are just running um, around with a the best characters. But again, it's a thing that it's so fucking just gets random. Dropped. <laughs> it's random. So they're there in that interview thing. Then when the purge starts, they're running around they with shopping have carts full of baby dolls, full of baby dolls, and blaring. Oh, it's it's let it whip. The whip a baby, let it all night. Yeah, yeah. Let it, yeah. It's fucking hilarious. Um, the whole theater laughed because they're going crazy. Yeah, so they're um they're having a blast. Yeah, and then they got later, their they got the contact lenses in, so it's <laughs> it's a look. Laughing, yeah. It's a look. And then later Isaiah runs into their like booby trapped baby doll thing that you said would make a great uh, uh, scare zone yes. at Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> Why is this not a scare zone? It might be. You Who have knows? to run through and there's just, there's they're setting off explosions. I there's don't know charges, how they made there's bombs, charges going off. But yeah, it's there's the last time we There's weird baby dolls ever and Let It Whip's playing. Yeah. 
you could actually die. You got to sign waivers before you run through because there's just <laughs> fire coming at you. Stuff is actually being blown up. Yeah, it's the last time we see these ladies in the movie. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, is Isaiah dodging their baby doll bombs. They reminded me a little <laughs> bit of the the girls in, is that election year? The candy bar girl? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With, I'm here for this candy you know, bar. Oh, my candy bar with their light up car. <laughs> these Purge movies always find these actors and are like, just do whatever I you love want. It. I Skeletor, love Candy Girl. It. Anna and Elsa. <laughs> Anna and Elsa. Okay, so the, the only one we see gearing up for the Purge as we know and love it is Skeletor. Who's got the fucking like Freddy syringe claws? There's a few of Freddy Krueger references. Oh, I what do you think like? else is there? Well, because he, so he's got yeah the syringes like Wolverine style kind of between his fingers, yeah. and they look like the Freddy and Dream Warrior. Dream Warrior, but he there's a shot of him walking down an alley. He also has a knife and he's like scraping it up against the, oh, and it reminded me a lot nice. of Freddy. I think there's a. So he's like Skeletor's. Skeletor's purge is on. Yeah. He like says to himself as he goes out. And so for everyone who always leaves comments of like, why is everyone going to kill people on purge? And I go steal shit. I do. Do you know how many comments I see that are like, I would go to GameStop and rob them, which really speaks of my demographic. That's hilarious. Is like so <laughs> many fucking comments on those videos. Are, Guys, GameStop's going to be picked over by the time <laughs> you get there. Everyone's going to GameStop. Everyone's going to GameStop out of my audience. Oh, man. But the first thing that we see someone trying to do in The Purge is rob an ATM. He's trying to bust open yeah. this ATM, which makes sense. Yeah. You know? But he doesn't succeed because Skeletor appears behind him, and Skeletor gets the very first purge kill. Yeah, and he knows it too. He's he yelling. He's excited. Yeah, he's telling the the drones that are recording people up in the air. Yeah, and uh, so he's one of these contacts, and his murder is recorded. And later on, uh, Marissa Tomei and Aldo get the uh, get the footage from it, and the footage is also like shown across news broadcasts. Yeah, they just play it. Yeah, they just play this dude getting stabbed, and I really liked how the people in the church reacted to it because they're fucking horrified by it. Yeah. And as you should be from this legalized murder in your community, like Mm -hmm. some of those people might have known that dude. Yeah, I think probably most of them didn't think it was actually going to happen, you know. Uh, But Marissa Tomei and Aldo, they're like pleased I guess she's kind of yeah, like she's she's, she's, she's very like yes this, uh, this is what I expected from my science. I still don't get that character. I don't dude. either. We're, are we supposed to like? Because Marissa Tomei is someone that I feel people like. Yeah. So if you're gonna cast the likable, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. Uh, so we also have so Dimitri tells his crew not to go out and purge because, mm-hmm. and I like the the reasoning he gives. You're you make money for me. Uh-huh. If something happens to you, I lose money. Don't fucking go out there and purge because just stay home, be safe. Yeah. Carry on as normal. Uh but one guy in his crew, Capital A, is, oh, is that his name? he wants to go out and purge. Yeah. And then so D has what who was his lady henchman's name? I wrote down Maisie. It might I not liked be right. Her. She needed more I know she did. She was barely in it and then she died. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she beats the crap out of capital A, but then we find out that come purge night, A is looking to, uh, dethrone Dimitri. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's the wire. It's, it's totally the fucking Dude, wire. Dude, even with, when we first meet Skeletor, we're at these, like, like, it looks like public housing, kind yeah. of. Oh, and for sure. That I'm shot. just like, where's that fucking couch? Where's the, <laughs> I was yeah. waiting to see all the kids sitting on the couch talking about chess. Yeah, talking about chess, <laughs> talking about pawns, uh, pawns. Um, oh, yeah, we, we see more stealing, people stealing from a store. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's happening. And, and those people are like, the store owner's there with a gun, and they're like, back up. Get out of here. We're just here for your shit. Yeah. And they don't kill him. They don't kill him. There's not needless killing at first, which I think is, yeah, it's Makes addressing sense. common comments I see on these movies. It's like, why, why is everyone yeah. killing? Well, they didn't at first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, that, I would just do so much white collar crime. Yeah, that, I've night. seen people be like hacking to shit. Oh yeah, <laughs> as if we all know how to hack. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Isaiah is still walking around looking for Skeletor, and he runs into a friend, a drug dealing friend, Kay, and they go to a purge party together. Yes, and this is looking bumping as hell. It's a block party with yeah, glow sticks and masks. A and lady, ass. lady dressed up like a leopard. Oh yeah, the She's like a one white lady thing. there just yeah. painted up like a. Leopard. <laughs> yeah yeah just hide yourself lady oh so funny so th- this is the kind of stuff that uh you might expect people to actually do on a bird they're partying they're yeah robbing they're stealing and doing drugs is, yeah lots of drugs yeah and uh this is what is upsetting the new founding father the chief of staff aldo because he's like they have to kill more yeah Why aren't this they is killing not the more? results they were expecting mm-hmm and at first I was like, why do they care? Why are they saying that if people don't murder each other, it's a failure for the NFFA? Mm. And then later he explains his reasoning to Marissa Tomei. There's too many people and they don't want us to raise taxes. So we have to kill people. <sighs> taxes are purged. We never learn, do we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He comes right out and says, we're doing this so we can have all the poor people kill each other. That's literally. And like, again, that was an idea explored in anarchy and election year. Uh, especially by the Big Daddy character who says we have to, like, cull the herd, essentially. Which uh, one's Big Daddy? I'm sorry. He, he's in a... Yeah, because Chelsea just watches these movies once with me and yeah. doesn't pour over every frame like me as I'm counting up these <laughs> fucking kills. Speaking of which, for the first half of this movie, I was like, no problem. And then the Nazis came. And the Nazis, Nazis rolling the town. Fucking Nazis like, ruined everything. four wheelers and shit. Yeah. Yeah. No idea how I'm going to... So, uh, so Big Daddy is the guy in the back of the semi-truck with the fucking... Yep. Uh, okay. Gatling gun got or whatever the got hell. It, got it. Got it. Uh, someone's gonna comment. I don't. Yeah. Gun. We don't care. <laughs> we really don't care. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh. So there, there. This party's going on, and then Skeletor shows up. Oh, yeah, Skeletor it. ruins, he fucking the ruins party. everything because he shows up to this purge block party and just starts stabbing people. He kills three people. I counted them up. You it wasn't did. hard. <laughs> wasn't difficult. He stabs them, yeah. and everyone else runs away. And uh, at the same time, while he's doing this, there's an uh, assassination attempt on Dimitri by two hookers that he didn't even want in the first place. Mm. He told his buddy, I don't know. I don't want hookers tonight. I just want to lay low. But they brought him anyway, and they were sent by capital A, Mm -hmm. and they try to kill him. And he, he, like, stops them and doesn't kill them. And uh, he's like strangling them out. And he's like, who sent you and how much? And it's capital A a lot. Yeah. And then he uses them to uh, to trap capital A because he. Yeah. He, he kind of uses them as a bait. Yeah. Because capital A meets with them and is like, whoa, whoa, you did it. Good job. And then they come out with guns and he's like, no, fuck you. He shoots capital A and his, his henchmen and then he lets the women live. He tells them to run away basically is like lion king like run away yeah, and never, never return back, never return to staten you know Island. what stringer bell would have murdered those ladies stringer bell would have but dimitri <laughs> is more moral than stringer bell like you said and this is what part this is part of what makes him a fun character to root for because it's like oh man's a, gotta have a code he's got a code he's got a code. Gotta have a code yeah you know he killed the guy who tried to usurp him but he let the ladies live but he banished them yeah sounds like a guy you know in this movie to root for yeah. i wouldn't be friends with him in real life I'd be scared. Yeah. He's a drug dealer, drug kingpin, but watching a movie and watching him kick ass later, good stuff. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. (sighs) Uh, Let's see. Oh, so um, what's the little brother's name? Isaiah. Isaiah is freaking out because Skeletor's come for him. Oh, yeah, because he goes to shoot Skeletor, but he doesn't. He he can't do it. He doesn't. Yeah, he he doesn't have the guts to do it. Yeah, I think Skeletor knocks his gun out of his hand, so Mm -hmm. he runs, and, and so when he's on the run, he contacts Naya, his sister, to be like, hey, I'm not in Brooklyn. Yeah, and so this kind of starts uh the more aimless section of the film this is when i started getting restless cause yeah because isaiah's people just people run in places and you do have the cool imagery because this is when you see like the the contacts peering out from dark windows yeah and, like that shit we're cool. about to talk about one of the most what the fuck things the sewer thing yeah what oh the yeah that was fuck? explicit dude i okay so Naya, Naya leaves the church to go find her brother. So she's running around on the streets and she, 
What? She hears, she, like, a, hears, a, she hears baby a baby noise, crying yeah. and she's standing over like a sewer grate mm-hmm. and, and her leg gets like, it like, ensnared. like cartoon trap. Yeah. Like she, her foot gets ensnared in this thing and she gets pulled down to the ground and then she's getting pulled into like this open sewer grate where there's a guy with a mask, a guy with a, uh, he has a mask on and then he has a baby doll face like over his mouth. I think it's a gas mask with a baby doll head on it yeah and it's making this noise and it's making like creepy baby sounds and then he is just grab like he's just grabbing her crotch he's grabbing her vagina it's so weird because right before this scene i was i was thinking to myself i like that the perch (laughs) series doesn't have a ton of sexual violence because that's there's always the threat of it. there's always the threat of it but it's not that's not what the series is about yeah. And then this happens and I was like, "No, god. It's he, he's just like grabbing at her he's and then straight up grabbing it was and so like it's, weird. it's shown. It he's was just so uncomfortable. It's and very then uncomfortable. she she fights back and gets away. And she says, she, "Pussy grab motherfucker." Yeah, as she's running away. She's and like, my, "You pussy grabbing motherfucker." Was that supposed to be Yes. I know like put like obviously pussy grab, but like yeah. the fact that it's like a baby head doing it it's like a weird baby grab because like everyone always like kind of calls trump like a man baby oh i don't know if that's as explicit a connection but definitely pussy grabbing is definitely like a a nod well yeah grab him by the pussy. yeah of course of course i just thought maybe the baby head was like a weird trump i don't know i don't know i don't know about that i don't know it was really weird though it happens in the movie and (laughs) it was super weird I guess, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like upset that it was included is it like just, uncomfortable uh, with purpose. Yeah. It would happen, I guess, in the purge. Yeah. Glad she got away. Yeah. Only to be then threatened with rape by Skeletor who finds her and grabs her. Yeah. And, uh, Isaiah rescues her, stabs Skeletor in the back, but they, and they run away. Yeah. Uh, he cuts her on the neck too. Oh, does he? Yeah. Oh. They both. Yeah. Also, while Isaiah is hiding out for people, his phone's vibrating, put that shit on silent. Dude. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Uh, so, yeah. After Dimitri shoots Capital A and is on his way back to, like, his place, he's driving with his buddy, and then they get hit by this, like, flaming truck. I think it's just a fire truck on fire. Oh, how ironic. Or an ambulance on fire. I couldn't tell. Who who fights the fire truck fires? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it slams into them, and uh, this is after like the NFFA guy is complaining about like it, it will all be deemed a failure if people aren't killing because mm-hmm. the news reports keep saying like it's pretty quiet, people are just kind of partying, mm-hmm. and there hasn't been that many murders. <laughs> there's also a because yeah, uh, there's just a bunch of random. It's a shit lot happening. of it's a lot of vignettes. So of excuse, stuff. yeah, it's vignettes. Yeah. But one of the vignettes is this crazy dude in a hazmat suit and a weird mask with like a weird like open mouth it kind of thing. It has teeth around the Yeah, it, lo- it looks it's weird. Real weird. He, it's he, cool. There there's some cool masks and stuff. There I just are. don't think cuz they show people wearing masks and it's like everyone's got really cool creepy masks on that look like college art student yeah. final for like they're festivals. neat <laughs> yes it looks like or festivals ann in ann arbor yeah. but <laughs> no no it would not look this cool in real life <laughs> everyone would just have weird <laughs> shit from party city <laughs> yeah right lots of ip like actual characters and stuff but this guy like uh pulls a gun on isaiah and naya and then he like it turns out to be a squirt gun, and he squirts him in the face. And it was just so funny because the guy sitting next to me was after after the dude used the squirt gun. The guy sitting next to me in the theater was just like, "What the fuck?" And then Isaiah was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> it was it was amazing. Um. Oh, and around this point in the movie, a bunch of white people were all in the town on four wheelers, and that's never a good sign. Well, they have a white flag with a black cross on it, and that's like... That's an even worse sign. Yeah, Uh, because this is when, yeah, Dimitri gets hit by that flaming truck, and then when he comes to, it's it's these people uh, wearing these masks and just shooting the fuck out of people it's right after they see those two people having sex against that's it. right there are multiple moments in this movie where i was like is this going to be the first occurrence of nudity in the purge series and like i don't know if it ever actually was i think you see a little bit of man ass in that in that hood fucking oh yeah you do okay 
I guess that's the first nudity. Yeah. Uh, but this is the point where my kill counting went out the window because uh, people just start getting shot up a whole bunch mm-hmm. by these, what should we call them? They're mercs. Th- sure. That is what but, they are. They're mercenaries. They're well, because there's, it's weird because there are a bunch of subgroups. There's like Nazis. You got KKK running mm, around. You got Klansmen in there with like colorful hoods. They yeah, were like a bunch red of like hoods colors. and shit. That was. I think scary. that is a. Thing. Is that a thing? I think. Holy so. shit! Oh, and they're they're also said to be Russian, which is. Oh, I didn't catch yeah, that. At one point, they were like, "Oh, Russian? What the fuck?" Oh boy. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think I think it is important to specifically say like which characters are mercenaries, just because plot. Okay. Like, you know, like that subgroup. Uh, I got very confused around this point too as to like which people were mercenaries. Were are all the uh, like the KKK people also mercenaries? I believe like so. they're all paid to show up because my um, it, it seems to me as though the point was made that Staten Island is not home to these people. Yeah, and that they were set up by the NFFA and paid. Uh, and this is what we learn is that. Uh, these these mercenaries are like on the NFFA payroll, and Marissa Tomei even follow tr- backtracks along some yeah, security cams. Yeah, because she's like, why are all these murders happening all of a sudden? This doesn't her prediction. Try was that my the, predi- which the violence would happen early and then heck, subside. Which whatever. whatever I don't want the fuck ever, Marissa Tomei. But yeah, she's like track those trucks backwards. So she kind of goes through all the security cameras and realizes that like around well, midnight they all came out of a warehouse driving yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah, and so yeah, the uh, Aldo is like, yeah, we hired these mercenaries because mm-hmm. we need to, and this is when he gets into the whole like purge, uh, lowering the population, the taxes and shit like that, and that's when she's like, what have I done? And then he leaves, and he's like, the your the your country will remember you as a hero. Yeah, you never want to hear that. You never want to no, hear that. No, you don't want to hear that because he leaves her uh, with some guards, and then the next time you see her is on an iPad uh, playing some security footage that Aldo is watching of her, like, getting thrown out of a van and then just uh, executioned, yeah, like, firing shot. squad. Yeah, like, a lot. Like, yeah, they shoot lot. her once and then just shoot her body a whole bunch. So, yeah, she did. Yep. Um, but, and again, are we supposed to feel bad for her? I don't know. She's a weird character. Let me know. Yeah. So these mercenaries, who I believe are all white people with uh, various hate group insignia on them yeah this is when isaiah and naya finally get back to the church okay so this is what i had a feeling was gonna happen Mm -hmm. they get back to their their church where naya was and they see that there's a bunch of like nazis running out Mm -hmm. um and it it's super evocative to me and i forget which city this was in the Mm -hmm. church shooting yeah that happened a couple. Is that a couple years ago? It's really cool that we now, can lose yeah. track of what cities these things happen in and what year they were in. Um, but yeah, I think as soon as I saw, there's the imagery of like this black church and you know these mercenaries. Charleston, that's is Charleston. Okay, yeah, so yeah. these mercenaries. It, it's just, I think it was kind of an intentional yeah. callback to like that violation of community spaces, like black community spaces and. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just like had a feeling that we were going there and yep, it sucked. Yep. They did that. Yeah. Luckily they don't show it. Like it, we see them leaving and they shoot a few people out on the steps. But yeah. Like, they never go into the church and see like a whole no, bunch of bodies. We and... don't need to see that. Yeah. Uh, that's when it's like too real. Mm-hmm. It's we're good. We get what happened. You know, like that's not fun uh, to watch a, the chick from Dexter La Guerta from Dexter and her daughter Selena survived this by like hiding under bodies, they say, which is horrific, but also what I have always planned on doing if I ever found myself in a shooting. Mm-hmm. Hide under a body. Yep. Uh, they like say they dead. cover themselves other people's blood, which is cool. There's, you know, we've interviewed like students who say they've done that to survive shootings. Yeah. What Purge, a country. Purge gets real, man. Purge yeah. gets real. And so there, so now this, this pair is uh with Naya and Isaiah mm-hmm. and they're going back to their apartment I guess to just uh try to be safe there. Mhm. Mhm. And uh meanwhile Dimitri who kicked the ass of all the mercenaries who like ran into his car. He yeah. like got out, broke one's neck and then shot the rest of them yeah. and then called his buddies. And, and then like, that's when they figure out 
these are all mercenaries. These are mercenaries. They're not part of the neighborhood. And then it becomes a like defending our neighborhood against these invaders, these instigators, mm -hmm. which uh, you you brought up. I think is really important. There's again, Purge, you do so much cool stuff. <laughs> you cram so much cool stuff in this movie. Ah, uh, um, you know, maybe the TV show will be good. I don't know if they have more time to explore, but the whole like, yeah, we got to defend ourselves against these, these instigators, specifically white military and like you know it reminded me so much of riot police showing up to protests that started peacefully um the idea of like you know instigating conflict to make peaceful movements appear violent to the larger media to like yeah and like this has been proven to happen right we know this happens yeah and not we're not saying all acts of violence at protests are by plants no but at least some of them are but we yeah yeah this is a thing yeah like i think like operation wall street uh had had this going on sometimes mm -hmm. uh and just pretty much any protest mm -hmm. i don't know man yeah the government doesn't love a peaceful <laughs> like like civil this like like all the stuff that the fbi did to the black panthers in like the 60s it's oh, fucked yeah. up go read about that I don't even want to get into it because it's too complicated. We are sending you home with a lot of homework. A lot of homework. But there's a, yeah, we know for a fact that the government tried to make out those movements during the civil rights era to be more violent than they actually Hoover, were. Hoover, dude. Yep. Fucking Fuck Hoover. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck that guy. I fucking hate that guy. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, th this is when there's like montages of stuff. There's like flamethrowers and the cops shooting a black guy on a baseball diamond, which was a weird shot. That was weird. There's like a whole bunch of cops like. With the national anthem, I think, playing. I don't know. Something. I don't know. But they get back home and they find blood on the floor, which maybe should have been elaborated on a little bit. Yeah. Because it's like wet blood and she's like, oh no, uh, Isaiah cut his neck a few days ago. But obviously if it's a few it days ago, it shouldn't be wet. fresh. But yeah, this is mm -hmm. like a weird I don't know what happened there. I don't know. There's a line somewhere in here about we're under siege from a government that doesn't care about any of us. Just a lot of themes, a lot of thematic yeah, stuff uh, happening. Along the same lines, the I, they find Dimitri and like his like crew. They find a bunch of weapons. I don't remember where. They yeah. They said something about I I didn't catch the line. They said we got a bunch of weapons. They I think it's police stuff. Maybe. I don't know. But there's a line about how, like, how can they expect us not to use this stuff when, like, they equip their own. Like, oh, I didn't catch there's that There's something. Line. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So the milita militarization yeah. of police. Just the constant. Just talk the about constant one-upping of, like, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we d we never even mentioned the three wise men or whatever. Oh, no, we didn't. They're I liked fun them. Characters. They're straight out of a Spike them. Lee movie. Yeah. These, like, <laughs> three bigger, older guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the three wise men slash the three stooges slash I forget what else they call themselves. Uh, it was the... Th yeah, I forget. Three kings. The three kings, three wise men, three stooges. Yeah. yeah. I liked them. They're a lot of fun. They're they're under attack at one point, and Dimitri and his crew come and save them from these, these mercenaries who are just... Uh, all out war at this point you know they are and and this is like it becomes a bit of a video game stuff with like oh i'm out take cover fire uh, yeah. and then smoke grenade comes in but uh this is where like it's it's still hard for me to completely buy that this would happen if the truth of this got out and your argument was that it wouldn't get out because marissa tomei was killed and no, no i think it like it would get out but no one would believe it or care you, you think that no one would believe it uh i don't know about that i don't think there's any way that you can say no one would care about literally because this is literally nazi stuff at this point because the the government hired mercenaries are going into this large like uh lower income housing project tower and going floor by floor kicking down doors and murdering everyone they find. The and FBI like, did that in the 60s to Black Panther members. Like, that happened, and we know it happened. Like, that shit happens, I, man. I, d I don't know the specifics of that, so I can't comment on that. Uh, I, I'll say there's a difference between, and there's a, not to me, maybe, but, like, to, to the people at large, there would be a difference between Black Panther members who 
don't deserve to get shot like that, but and like general populace. I, yeah, like political affiliation versus these are just civilians. just citizens. Yeah. So this this is where it's a little bit stretching the the my suspension of disbelief is that these government hired mercenaries can go floor by floor. Like this is but Nazi that's the stuff. thing is this it's is mass execution right. of American citizens by the government. But the the thing is, is the only people who know that these guys are mercenaries are Marissa Tomei, who is dead. Who's dead, yeah. And our main characters, and that's it. But I feel like the main characters could could talk to the ACLU and get that megaphone from but, the ACLU like, and I, like I still think even if they get that out there. It, you, you're not going to convince an entire country that that's what happened. I think you just need to convince 51% of them. I don't know. I don't know. Again, for me, for me yeah. it stretches a little bit. Sure. Yeah, it kind of strains it. Because, like, this is fucking mass execution. It's literally... The only thing I can compare it to is Nazis who... Or, I guess, Stalin they are, shit. Yeah. Like... And yeah, th- th- this is when they introduce the dude running around in a Nazi coat. In, like, a leather daddy nazi outfit yeah and it's real weird to have him come in this late and then be the big bad guy all of a sudden Uh but he's leading this group that's going floor by floor yeah murdering everyone Uh just straight up murdering i i still just think like it it would be a thing where people wouldn't believe they're mercenaries people would be like they're making this up to like make sure you know you're making this up to make all you know yourselves all look better you're all just animals you did it to yourselves you're playing victim maybe the you know like you're just you're you're making it up this let's hope that this argument stays within the realm of fiction and movies for sure (laughs) uh a bunch of drones appear and now they have guns so they murder (laughs) drones with guns (laughs) drones with guns do do drones Drones with with guns. guns do do flying over do, do, killing Dimitri's gang. Oh, no. <laughs> yep, they murder all of Dimitri's gang, except for his buddy, Chevin, who's chilling in a to- Tommy Jarvis jacket. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I just <laughs> yeah. I thought he's like, that's a Tommy Jarvis jacket. Yeah, and who he fist bumps on his way Dying out to go. Dying fist bump. Yeah, uh, I'm going to call out more, nor that, but uh, Dimitri, like, so all of his gang is murdered, and so he has to John McClane his way through this tower. Oh yeah, on his own with a mach- with a, a a gun, a rifle of some sort. Uh, I kind of liked this whole sequence. Yeah, because it kicks ass. ass. Yeah. yeah, this is why I'm saying Dimitri's a fun character to root for. Is I was thinking of this part where he's going through this tower kicking nazi ass yeah and like there's a stairwell battle where the camera keeps whipping around up and it's down it's pretty cool it's pretty fucking it's cool. a good sequence and the physicality of this actor oh my god all just, this all the choreography because you're it's, it's legit stunt cor- like we're not yeah. we're not cutting to make it look like it's they're all fighting bullshit born editing it's pretty it's, like long takes of of him fighting nazis and yeah. it's really good it's choreography cool, man. yeah it's really cool lighting to too mm-hmm. oh yeah because and then after that he like uh, cuts the power or whatever, and so it's like the strobing light. kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, that is pretty much the lighting for the the end stuff here going on, where you know Naya and Isaiah and uh, uh, Dolores, Lagardia, Lagardia and Selena, and then Dolores hooks up with them too. The five of them are like hanging out in their apartment on the fourteenth floor. So like these, the the villains are going up floor by floor. Mm-hmm. Demetrius trying to catch up to them. And, uh, yeah, he just keeps killing people. He winds up, um, how does he get with them? What? Like, in their room? Oh, I don't know. They, I don't they, they do a little bit of defense themselves. Yeah. When some people come in and uh, Naya shoots them with a, a big, like, Magnum-esque gun that yeah, she has, a big hand cannon. A big gun. And then, yeah. Yeah, I think they call it a hand cannon. They, they do, yeah. And then Isaiah and uh, Dolores it's fucking stab the yeah. shit out of these Nazis. And then they take their guns and Dimitri ends up with them. I forget. I forget how, how a lot. The end of this movie is kind of. A- oh well, he kind of like he he's killing all these other Nazis, and you th- uh, he kills the head Nazis group, but the head Nazi hides out, and so I think Dimitri's able to get past them and into Naya's room. Yeah. But basically, there's like a big showdown. Head Nazi gets reinforcements. They're all shooting stuff, and then grenade launcher. They start to take out a grenade launcher, and they're saved. By <gasps> oh my god and then skeletor shows up behind the nazis remember skeletor skeletor he was part of this movie at one point <laughs> and 
Skeletor is the the T Rex of this <laughs> film because he just saves the day. He like kills the bad guys, not out of any obligation to the good guys, yeah. but because they're in his way. <laughs> yeah, he kills a few of them, and then he gets gunned down. So you're so Skeletor for a second dead. like, yay, Skeletor. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, Big Daddy Nazi is still there with a few other dudes, and Dimitri throws out this C4 that was uh, mentioned earlier in the film, manages to shoot it. He gets shot in the process, but mm-hmm. he shoots it, blows it up. They hide under a mattress, which, sure, sure yep, whatever. Sure. And uh, that's it. They they blow up the Nazis, and the purge is over. The sirens yeah, blare. Dimitri and Naya love each other again. Oh, yeah, that was kind of weird. She was like, I'm I kind of liked it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they're a really agree. attractive couple yeah and um, so they're um the end of the movie is they're like all outside and it's daylight because the purge is over and dolores is like telling everyone to get the fuck out of the way oh yeah these are the lines from dolores where i'm like oh, damn all right I, dolores. I, I, I love this character so much yeah. until, make way big dog of the project coming yeah. through <laughs> Or like no, when he first gets when he first joins up with them in the apartment, she's yeah. like she's like, Oh, Dimitri, big head drug dealer of this neighborhood. <laughs> and Naya <laughs> like she's just like yeah. exposition. It's yeah. not great. Yeah, yeah. But uh yep, that's the end of the movie. And they, they say, What well, what do we do now? We fight. And I said, At, at the polls. polls. At the ballot box. Yeah. But uh after the credit or right after the credits start, you see Although given a press conference and saying that the purge was such a success that next year they're expanding it to the whole country. Yay. And that gives us the series of the purge. That's the Woo. purge series. First purge. First purge. So yeah. It's it's fine. Uh, yeah, it's it's weird how such a meh movie gives us so much to talk about. Yeah, this is a long one. Yeah, this is a long review. Um yeah. Such such weird movies <laughs> these are. <laughs> I'm fine with them. I'll yeah. watch them. Uh, this is going to be a fucking, it's going to be a bitch to kill count. They mm-hmm. always are. I hate it. I hate frame by framing. Dude. I mean, at least the KKK had different colors on. So maybe that makes it a little easier. I don't know. There's so much like smoky shootouts in yeah. this movie. Uh, it's going to be so annoying. Yeah. But I'll cover it when it comes out on Blu-ray. Don't ask for it before. You know the fucking rules. I, I don't even have to say that to the podcast listeners. They're better. <laughs> <laughs> See, the trick is that anyone listening to this that applies to them. Yeah, listener. so they shouldn't, exactly. they shouldn't complain about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, the podcast audience tends uh, I know. That's to why not. I feel a little more comfortable talking about, like, you know, some nuanced shit on this podcast and some, you know, tough stuff. Some yeah, social, I'm assuming you're... Political, uh, you know, even if you're you're not, even if you don't agree with our beliefs, you're not you gonna least, like be a huge dick. Yeah, you're open minded enough to hear us out because that was a lot of responses to the final girl episode. People who were like, you know, what? I didn't, I didn't uh, necessarily agree with everything you said, but it was interesting to hear. Yeah, which, and that's, like, great, that's, that's what I want to hear. Yep, that's the dialogue that's that all I we're all for. missing in this country that we would like to have. So, yeah. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed our commentary on this. Again, no way to discuss these movies without delving into the. Yeah, it would be a terrible review if. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. We should get our podcast taken away if we were just like not talking about that. Yeah, sidestepping all that shit. Yeah. We won't do that. We address shit head on. on Yeah. And give you homework. (laughs) Yeah. American history homework. Tuskegee. And Fred Hampton and the Black Panthers. Yep. Have fun. Yep. All that. Anything cool else country. to mention? <laughs> um, uh, no. We cool. can say where to find us. Oh, sure. Find Dead Meat on Twitter and Instagram at Dead Meat James and on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Fucking already you know, subscribe. I'm, I'm Carebeck, C-A-R-E-B-E-C-C on Twitter and Instagram. DeadMeatStore.com for merch. DeadMeatPod at Gmail. DeadMeatPod at Gmail. Email us. Yeah. Chelsea always checks out those emails. Yeah, I try and respond to them. She's like much better with that email than I am with <laughs> Dead Meat James or Dead Meat Movies. Which is an that's e- an email. I set up an email for people to specifically make requests. That's and when I first set it up, I tried to respond and always be like, "Thank you," but they just never stopped coming, Chelsea. I know they never stopped coming. I There's know. so many unread requests in there, but maybe one day I'll get to them. Uh, but in the meantime, 
we'll keep releasing these podcasts every week so tune in next tuesday for a movie review with a friend of ours it'll Mm -hmm. be a good one and in the make sure you rate and review us on itunes or whatever app you use yep but until all that i'm james i'm chelsea this has been the dead me podcast